On today's episode of the Mark Titus Show, uh, a bit of a departure. Um, Nick and KB, two of the two guys, uh, uh, Nick Tarani, Kyle Bauer, two guys that work at Barstool, absolutely hilarious. Uh, hosts of uh, TJ's other show. TJ cheats on me all the time. Uh, or I'm the I'm. If we're being completely honest, I'm the mistress. He's married to the Yak. He's married to to KB and Nick and the rest of the guys uh, on the Yak. I'm the mistress, but that's okay. Um, they host the Yak. They host uh, a, a, a new untold story. Uh, great acronym for for those of you who don't know uh, that podcast. Um, work that one out in your heads. Uh, but yeah, these guys uh, are are creative dudes. They're they're uh, very very funny, and um, I I they they have like an energy. Like we talked about it a little bit, but they have like a a dismissive energy that almost. I, I feel like when I'm around them, TJ, that I'm. Um, just their aura is negging me, you know, to where like, I want to, I want to win their, appro- why, why is it that I want to win their approval so badly? You know, like, like you, you walk into the room and they're both like sitting over there and you're just like, I got to go sit over there and like crack the one joke that'll get them to laugh and you know, win their approval. Uh, they, and there's, there's just something about them. That's, that's that way. I don't know. I don't they're know. The homies. It. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, but yeah, we're doing so. We are doing the uh, uh, Nick and KB are also involved in this. TJ, are are you bowling? Are you doing this? I think it depends on if Brandon Walker's health status improves or not. But yeah. it sounds like there might be an open slot. I don't. So I don't know for bowling. sure or not. Yeah, I'm showing uh, up ready to bowl. So we are. We recorded this on Tuesday. We were all in the office, um, and and I grabbed these guys uh, as as kind of a uh, you know just a, 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 a fun episode. Like I said, I want this show to be me talking to people I find interesting about things we all find interesting, and and that's what we did with with Nick and KB the whole game. Uh, Kyle, <clears throat> excuse me, was a wrestler at Kent State, uh, and he and I kind of bantered a little bit about our experiences as guys who were good at sports once upon a time and then had to deal with the reality of oh my god i, I kind of suck at this and and just processing what all, all that's about but uh uh great dudes had a great conversation with them um and yeah i hope you enjoy uh, nick tarani and kyle bauer all right i'm here with uh kb and nick um they are they are making their uh, debut appearance on the uh the mark titus show which uh we i i have i i don't i haven't talked to you guys a ton no. in the office um I, I feel like we're all like similarly aligned where I, I don't know I've always felt like KB and I are similarly aligned with like how we maneuver through the I, I've observed you maneuvering through the office and how you interact with people and I feel like I see myself in you and like how you're handling we are very similar you move through you the know, office I, like a specter though like a like an apparition because like you will get to that level yeah eventually where you just completely avoid <laughs> yeah yeah i'm like trying to i'm trying to like be a part of everything while at the same time avoiding everybody and i'm right. trying to like thread that needle and i think you've you've mastered it and i'm, I'm mm-hmm. kind of studying the way you're mm-hmm. handling it but uh yeah i've made the mistake of being a bit too social i think i have kind eyes and so people <laughs> people vent you to do. me uh kyle has the per- he's he is living in the perfect world at barstool sports yeah, you guys. You guys are both. Uh, um, d- does it weird you out at all that like you you are the the uh, you're the answer whenever anybody's like uh, you know who do you, who do you like at Barstool and and you guys are always. I mean, it, it, that, it, it, that, that's not. It doesn't reflect in the numbers or the followers <laughs> or the pay. So I don't know how that's the. I don't think that's the case at all. But do you, do you get uncomfortable with? Uh, I mean, because that's that w- that would be my answer. I, I I get asked like who who do you guys who do you like at Barstool? Like whose content do you like? And it's like Nick and KB, Nick and KB, like over and over and over. Because you, you guys feel like you have a personality type where you're like, we're we're sort of flattered, but also it sort of makes us uncomfortable. Is that fair or no? Yeah, that's always uncomfortable, I think. <laughs> it, like, very much so. But, but it's not... Before people got to know us, like in the office, it was weird. They were like, oh, like I, these guys are always lying. These guys are weird. But I think it's more <laughs> of like an intimidation thing. Like they don't, they're afraid to know what we're up to, like what we're doing. They think we're, they give us like more of a, more credit than we deserve way more yeah i i I get the sense of like people interact with you guys they feel like you just ran circles around them right and not the case we'll have the most normal conversation like oh you're breaking my brain brain. i think we're two pretty like average (laughs) intelligent guy like like we're not geniuses by any means whatsoever so stupid yeah many yeah you're real dumb on a lot so how how does this happen dude i don't know like the first (laughs) video we ever put out it looks like we dropped the cell phone that we filmed on in Vaseline. Like it was just something happened in the upload and it was just like 12 pixels yeah. total. You couldn't hear shit. And people were just like, 
fucking genius. I think, yeah, I think <laughs> we're like the first people at Barstool to do like a double entendre. Yeah. <laughs> so there are people who are like, whoa, they, these they, guys. They think we invented the homonym. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Um, how, how did you guys, I, I, I apologize if you've already talked about this, uh, a million times. Um, but I, I don't know all the barstool lore with everybody. Uh, how, how did you come to be? How are you, how are you here? Why are you here? Um, what, I mean, the succinct version, if you, if you want. Kyle was here a year and a half before me. Yeah. So I was tweeting a lot and I was blogging on my own and like tweeting the blog links. Yeah. Dave caught wind. You were doing more than blogging. You had your own store. That not a lot of people know about. Uh, yeah, well, what's your what's your because you, you sold your retainer. You I somehow you yeah so, I did. You you wrestled at Kent State. Yes. Uh, but you somehow downplay this while at the same time not downplaying it. Like you, you you're not afraid to acknowledge it, and yet like I feel like in an office full of like wannabe athletes, the fact that you're a Division One wrestler should like shine through. I agree. Agreed. Should, now that I, yeah, I, I think you know what I mean. There's but a little like, bit of resentment that I've seen, like that people don't respect it, but he doesn't want to ask for the respect. Yeah. And, and I, I find that fascinating. Like, so like what was, were, were you using that as you got into the media world? Were you using your status as like, I mean, in a similar way I kind of did where I was like on a basketball team and I was like, I'm going to use this as leverage to, you know, build a career out of, you know, whatever the hell it is we do now. Um, or was this like something you're like, that was my past life. Yeah, it was, it was and, definitely the past life. And A, I was doing early childhood special ed, so that didn't really so play was, a factor. Yeah. And then, like, I was tweeting. My tweeting style didn't really, like, yeah. you know, associate with sports at all. So, And by the time I was done with wrestling, I was – I wanted to – because in my world, I was failing. I wasn't yeah. starting. Yeah. I wasn't living up to my goals or expectations, so I just – I was kind of a failure. You're, you're preaching to the choir. This was this was my I this is my whole identity. Yeah, it was like I, I mean, I'm sure at some point in your life you were good at wrestling, and that's how you got right. To like college. that was like, like, yeah, my life awesome. for the yeah. first 18 years or whatever, and then it kind of ended like I hate this and I and I'm the worst. <laughs> and then, then <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, chewed me up. So now, like, out. have you gotten to a point now where you, now like you, I'm at a point where like I sh wish I would have uh, been more like. A pr proud and appreciative i guess i don't know yeah or just what like, about you yeah yeah i i i i, I hear what you're saying because it was uh the whole reason i started my blog and the whole reason i created like this persona of like a dipshit guy at the end of the bench is because it was insecurity and it was like if i can beat everybody to the punch and make fun of myself for sucking at basketball then no one will ever but be it's able to insane make fun how we dude felt. i'm so sorry you guys had to protect <laughs> yeah. yourselves yeah. as d1 yeah. athletes yeah. Yeah. i went to fucking art school boys yeah. but we <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck both of you guys we felt yeah. so insecure oh, oh my god it is hard to be uh to be did, did either one of you have like the deal uh, uh i mean maybe kyle you did with wrestling or, or in school or art or anything else where you're like in fifth grade and like every the teachers around you or the adults around you are like you guys are fucking special and you're smart and you're is this something that you dealt with in life? No. Really? No. Yeah. You feel you like candidates did. for that. You feel it feels no, like it feels I was, like you were I was a bad student. I was like really? I had yeah. some savant like I would, I would memories like write get like a 3 3 but like just not I did, not a good student. Never good at school. <laughs> he was very gifted in like art in the comedic form. Uh, okay. I but guess, you, yeah. But, but you never had, you never had anybody. Great. There wasn't anybody in your life that was like, "You're destined for something." You're, you're, you know, maybe not like that dramatic, like it's a, you know, fucking Hollywood movie, but just that, like, like you're bigger than this town, or you're bigger than this. Like you didn't, you didn't have that feeling. Like you just felt like a very average person growing up. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild, yeah, man. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you were about to agree that for me, for you and me too. I, I, I it, guess like it was like yeah he's gonna go to college and wrestle but there's like no p career with there's that no, there's nothing after that yeah it was is the point of wrestling just to go to school for free is that the end goal well pre nil yes there is there's no glory in it whatsoever so yeah it, they're very proud like proud like I don't want the glory I don't want the money I want yeah to suffer. like res wrestling yeah. is like a very just yeah just. I, I I run a lot. That's all I remember about all the wrestlers in high school. It's just, yeah, just like, like I'm more miserable than you. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a, a test of, of misery. So, so wait, did you get that? Like, oh, you're, you're, you're too good for this town. You're a big fish. No, small I didn't get pond. that. But like, I, so my kind of my story, I, I was, I was six foot tall in sixth grade. Uh, I was, I were was you six, really? I was six, four in eighth grade. I'm six, four now. Six, four in I was eighth, six, four eighth grade. In eighth grade. Yeah. When did you have a beard? 
Uh, I shaved the first time I shaved was sixth grade. I had I didn't have like this beard, but I had like stubble on my chin, and I shaved in sixth grade. Yeah, so, so I hit I, I hit puberty before everybody else. Well, like, that kind of like tr- like surpasses awesome and kind of is like awkward. It's yeah. awkward. Yeah. It was very awkward because you're having I, crushes on girls that look yeah. like they're I'll never, twelve. So the one time I I ever dunked in a basketball game was in eighth grade. Uh, I did. I never dunked in high school because uh, I I was I was in an open gym once and I got like I, I went up to dunk and a guy fouled me pretty hard and I just became a pussy after that and like I got scared to like so I was like I'm just gonna shoot threes now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna attack just the throw it anymore. all away yeah but when I was in eighth grade I, I on a on a breakaway like no one on defense I kind of cherry picked sort of deal I, I went up and 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 dunked and I remember uh, a week later I was at the high school basketball game and these two senior twin girls. Uh, smoke like i don't i don't know what they actually look like but in eighth grade they were smoking hot yeah my the version i remember them they're smoking hot and they're like you're the kid that dunked in the eighth grade game right and i was like this is like a very bizarre reality to be living in yeah because i'm like like a peak yeah Yeah. Yeah. that's what i mean but even when i'm in eighth grade i knew like this is kind of pathetic that this is probably the best (laughs) my life (laughs) when were you able to buy beer for the first time yeah i mean honestly I, i probably could have in high school yeah yeah i could have in high school i was um but but the, I, the to, back to the original point was like I I wasn't told that I was like special and I was gonna but there was like some sort of expectation that like you're gonna I, I just I you guys feel like candidates of like the same sort of thing that like you you because we because that that was the other thing like in the in the uh, the small amount of time we've talked to each other off air um, you kind of com- we've kind of compared notes about you know growing up in a part of the country that gets overlooked often yeah you know? um, and. That so that was I I just figured that maybe there was some sort of part of that with you guys that like growing up in Wheeling, West Virginia, that someone's like, not that I'm not putting down your hometown, but I just feel like it was like a similar thing that like in, by, in by my all hometown, means put it down. In, in my um, hometown, if like somebody could do something above average, they were just like, all right, you're destined for something, and and it, it kind of fucked me up when I was growing up because I was like, I don't I don't necessarily want more than the you know like yeah. I don't understand why I need. Nope. Out of any town in America, I think Wheeling, West Virginia, is the town that cares the least about Kyle and I. It's, <laughs> it's, it's insane. <laughs> like we'll I, go I don't to Woonsocket, Rhode Island, or like it, it, I don't. Yeah, I, I guess I shouldn't expect them to. Yeah, but, but the, it's that you know, like it's a, such a small town. Like seeing people do something yeah. different, whether or not it's you know, in like yeah. we had a guy that like got cut from the first round of American Idol that from our town, and he's like. <laughs> He got carried back into town, like on everybody's shoulders. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's but what like, I don't know. I mean, it's, yeah, I don't know if we shit on it too much or like. That could be it. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. You're you're from where? I'm from uh, Hendricks County, Indiana. Brownsburg's the high school I went to. It's the West Side. It's not really. Is that where? Is that, that Danville? Is that in? Dan- oh, holy shit! That's yeah. the town I originally grew up in, and then so Brownsburg I, and then is Brownsburg. a powerhouse in basketball and all sports yeah yeah we've become a powerhouse since i graduated especially they've like when i was playing football there i remember uh when i was on the football team we started like three and oh one season and we were in the others receiving votes of the uh indiana state high school poll it was a big deal it was like holy shit we're like receiving some votes and then now brownsburg football is ranked like number one in the state like constantly like all in the time football they, yeah. basketball, basketball like everything so i don't know they, did don't they know beat happened, ben davis this year dude, look at you <laughs> <laughs> You're, this is like this they is not. his bread ben and davis. butter ben, 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 ben davis, davis, davis went tough. undefeated yeah ben kokomo davis undefeated. yeah kokomo <laughs> jennings county mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what else yeah. i remember i tried to i learned like you were doing like mr Mr. Your, basketball. That was your niche, and yeah. I, I just were learned. you studying them? I studied to, it just, just to see, you, just, just in, in case, case you got a chance to steal. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I remember Kyle Guy. It was like Kyle Guy, 2016. Yeah, he, he went. To, he was name. most outstanding player in the Final Four. Yeah, he went to Virginia and won a national championship. So he's he was a good. He's Mr. In playing in Greece now, I think. Yeah. And then Eric Gordon. Yeah. Zeller. What are what are your guys' sports backgrounds other than wrestling? Like, do you do you? Because <laughs> not playing, just watching. Like what? Oh, what is, I, like when you go back to like like your your sports fandom. Like what are what are memories that stick out? What is what is yeah? What what's like something like the nineteen ninety eight home run chase? Did that do it for you? Was it you know? I was always a football or basketball guy. Yeah. Um So I got really into college basketball uh, when John Beeline was at WVU and Kevin Pitsnoggle and like Mike Ganzi. Yeah. Um, and then later on with like. Deshaun Butler. Okay. And then, like, I also, 
had like when I was like understanding football. Pat White was at WVU with Slayton. Yeah, so that was like a good that time. That was a fun time. Yeah, to, yeah. And then yeah. A, I'm a Steelers guy. Okay. Yeah. That checks out. That all makes a lot. That makes a lot yeah. of sense. You're, 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 you're similar. Li- no, like my dad was from Jersey, and I was born in New Brunswick. So I was Jets, Mets, and Rutgers. Yeah. And my oh, best really? memory yeah. was really? 2007. Was it TJ? Six. Louisville, number two. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I love Brian Leonard, Ray Rice, and then wow. Jeremy Ito had the game-winning field goal. That was my best memory. <laughs> <laughs> TJ is just beaming right now. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, TJ. yeah. Uh, so wh- where are we at, at now with sports? Do you guys still like uh, – because you, you, that, that's another thing I noticed like whenever I'll watch the Yak is like you both seem to not – you both seem to have like a persona that's like, well, you don't really pay attention to all the shit going on. But then every so often you slip something in there about Jennings County high school basketball. And <laughs> like, Wait a second. Wait a second. What's the deal? So what, like how much, how much are you consuming sports? Do you feel like an old man? Have you like checked out on some stuff? Are you like national league baseball? He knows a now lot that about the DH football. has come I, in. I'm out. Like I watch, there... I watch as much as I can, but I don't want to like have to like be in the gambling cave yeah, or right. stream like yeah. a lot of it just cause, uh, I like watching it like with like my dad or like just alone or going to games. You have the thing of like once it becomes your job to watch football, it'll take away the the magic of it. Is it that like if, um, if you have to show up every day and like what's your take on the Jets last night? So I I, then, I hate having a take, um, yeah. just because no matter what it is, you're gonna piss off fifty percent of yeah, the people. Yeah. That's why he's like sports media guys. Good for you guys. Yeah, yeah. it's just like somebody's always really really mad at you. Dude, so what in, in your world what does that look like like what does like if you guys like put out a video or put thing out a is podcast like, it's not funny and we just have are, a like a crew that will watch us but we're not going to upset anyone because they're just not going to listen in the first place whereas <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. We're, pe- like people love to watch and listen to the sports media personalities they hate because they that's love true. that they maybe more so than the ones they like oh definitely and you don't really have an opponent so if you you, you put out a f- something funny or whether people find it not funny or not it whatever there's not like a, an inherent opponent. Whereas if I say that, uh, you know, that next year St. John's is going to win the Big East, now I've pissed off every other school in the Big East. And there's like an yeah. inherent like, so anytime you have an opinion or whatever, I don't know. Like it's, cause with they, a joke, what, what do haters a, look like with with in the comedy world? It's, like, it's I guess heckling at a stand up show, but like yeah, in the internet yeah. world, like how does that? Yeah, because people aren't really inclined to be like to feel the need to comment if like a, a joke was unfunny. Yeah. Whereas if you say like a like an opinion based about a sports team, they they get fired will, up. There's no that. freezing cold for, takes for jokes. For, for jokes. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. That's a, that's that's a great point. So yeah, you fucked up like interest wise. I, like, I kind of did. Yeah, I, I was too. Because you're a funny to, guy. I had I have either of you done stand up or pursued it? I did it once. That's right. Yeah, I was in, I was in New York when you did it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was a nervous wreck, and it just I I, it's, I don't think it was for me. I I had that that brief moment of time where I was like I, I I think I want to try stand up, but then I felt like I I almost like did like an ego check where it's like what makes you think that you would be good at this, and I I have really bad. I mean, I'm. I don't know if you guys are the same way, but I, I have like zero. My self confidence is in the gutter. It's, it's yeah, I think we're both. Yeah, yeah. I think we're all. Yeah, yeah. And it's just that. like it is this so entire fragile, room too. is just watching just, me. Yes. and just hearing yes. me, they don't get to respond. Right, and it's uh, that's. Um, I'm not saying like the people that do it are like uh, narcissists or anything, but it's just not for me. Yeah, I would that's rap- that's always been my attitude. Is like I don't, I don't, I'm never projecting my uh, uh, self confidence issues on someone else. And I'm saying if you do this and it says something about you, it's just like this is my personal experience with it. Is I I became drawn to the idea of doing stand up comedy because I did think I was kind of funny and I thought like I could write funny stuff and yeah. I enjoyed the art of like, you know, if you if you say this. The, you know the, the, this part of the joke and you put it at the end then like so that's a, a that'll hit harder like i enjoyed all that when i would write blogs in my book and all that kind of shit but then i just i like, couldn't get over the fact of like if i volunteer if, if i step up and stand on stage i'm basically saying to the world i am really fucking funny i and deserve I felt like your that, attention yeah i deserve your attention yeah. i was like there's no way that i will ever think that i can get to that point so i never actually pursued it i'm no i don't necessarily regret it but that is uh yeah i don't know there when when i when i graduated college um jimmy kimmel so uh bill simmons and jimmy kimmel both uh were i don't know like interested in hiring me i guess yeah and and 
the first time I ever went to LA, um, I, I, Kimmel flew me out there and he was kicking the tires on like hiring me to, to, I think he was to, to write for a show because you sure um, he just wasn't trying to fuck you. He might've been, he might've been, yeah. um, my, my first time in LA, I, uh, by, by the way, I Kimmel, I, I get to the hotel, Kimmel texts me, um, come to, come to my house and we'll go to dinner. And so I get like an Uber to his house and I couldn't believe like this, I'm 22 years old. I haven't even graduated college yet. Like the basketball season had just ended and I get to his house and I knock on the door. Like I literally just walk up to the front door and, and knock just on knock? the door. Yeah. I'm just Kimmel, like, and, and at this point, what is Kimmel doing? He's the host of Jimmy Kimmel Live. Yeah, at this at this point, he is, he's yeah. he's not only the host; like it had popped off at that point. Like he's hosting the Oscars. Uh, okay, he's times. huge. Yeah. He's huge. Yeah. And can I ask? Like, I know you had a blog in college. Yeah. And it was it got that um, big and popular, whereas you got the attention. Well, of it's people. hard to it's hard to like quantify, like big. It, it, this was the the. This was the dead ball era of the internet. You know what yeah. I mean? Like this was when, like this was uh, was this like a Tucker Max era? This is like Tucker Max era. This okay. was like. Were like, you inspired by Tucker Max? I, <laughs> I bought Tucker Max's book. Uh, I I didn't even get to read the first page because I brought it home. I made the mistake of like setting it on the island of our house. My dad like found it and just threw it straight in the garbage. Was yeah, like, you're not going to read any of this. And then that it was doesn't hold up. Yeah, it does not, it does yeah. not hold up. No, so I, I thankfully was not inspired by Tucker Max. But uh, no, my blog was like, yeah, it was big at the time ish. I don't know. It was. It's. I don't know how you quant. Like I was doing. Um, I think I remember like there were like seventy thousand. I get like seventy thousand page views for Which every. Is that's huge. a lot. For, every O2. blog that I would. There wasn't O two. This was. This was 08, 09. I was going to think you said 02. I was going to say, you're not that old. I'm not that old. But, uh, but still, like that, that was like pre social media or very was, early. Yeah, Facebook. like Twitter had just started. So, in so order I, to go, yeah. you wouldn't, you weren't like going viral. It was all word of I, what? I wouldn't have known if I was going viral. And in fact, a lot of times uh, I got in trouble because I would write shit thinking that like I have like a smallish audience and know, like the, 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 the best example of this was when the Ohio State tattoo gate thing was going oh, yeah. on. Um, I, I got so many people that were reaching out to me. They're like, Titus, what's going on on campus? Like, are the guys getting free cars, all this sort of thing. And I remember writing on my blog, like, uh, I don't know if they're getting free cars. I don't know what's going on. I will say this every time I drive by the, by the football facility, these dudes are all driving Dodge chargers and, you know, like, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like they got nicer cars than the basketball team has. And I'm not really sure how that's, that's, uh, working. And, uh, I got aggregated by ESPN and they were like, put it like Ohio state athlete, colon, the football players drive nice cars they can't afford or something like uh, something like that. Yeah. And that was how uh, I sort of found out my reach for lack of like, I was like, Oh shit, like people are reading this and like, this can get out of, out of hand a little bit, but I wasn't, but I also wasn't like a viral. I mean, you know, like if I was, I would be, I, I, I would have a lot more money and I would have, you know, like I would have, so I don't, I don't know how to like, you know, like it wasn't like I was like a sensation, but I definitely had like a, a, a legitimate a website audience. take off. Yeah. yeah. And, and the so, timing of that is insane because I don't know if that could happen today. Like, I don't yeah. know if like a, you could, an athlete could like have well, a that's blog. That's what, every time I tell my story to, to like 23 year olds and they're like, how do I get into sports meet? I'm like, I, I like my advice is like kind of worthless. Cause like my path is the, the door has been slammed shut. Yeah. It's like this, the shit that I do that, that I did what isn't even kind of interesting now like the idea like if 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 a if a college basketball player made a tongue in cheek highlight mixtape and put it out like you guys would just be like, you guys wouldn't even watch like no one no one would watch it no it, one that was yeah, all of our, it's, it's, that was our content like 7 8 years ago yeah. too it just evolves and like there's so much and and i put i put that out like in 08 or 09 or no it was January of 2010, I put out like my, a Mr. Rainmaker video um, that, yeah, like, I, I don't know. And it, it, again, it didn't like explode, but like, it, it was like sort of a thing. It was weird. But like if any of the shit I did, if, if someone did it now, like it wouldn't really work. And that's like a bizarre thing to think like, was I actually funny and talented or was I just first? Yeah. Was I like just kind of like the first walk on to I just be a jackass? I think about that myself. You know All the I mean? time. All you know the I mean? time. Yeah. Um, so anyway, my, I, I, uh, uh, when when I was doing the blog, I, Kimmel, uh, plays it close to the, to the chest, but he, he was a huge college basketball fan. Cause he grew up in Vegas during the UNLV yeah. running rebels days. Um, so he loves UNLV. They kind of suck now. So he's like not as interested, but, um, he somehow came across my blog. I don't know if it was Simmons that showed him or whatever. And he, he just like, basically was like, I want to meet you. Do you want to come to LA? And I, I did. And I was like, yeah, of course, this is crazy. And so, yeah, like I go to, I go to LA the first time I'd ever been to LA. Uh, he texts me his address. I just showed up. I couldn't believe like 
uh, yeah, I'm just knocking on his door. That's really brave of you to do. It was it, it, the, the 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 funny part about the story is I I kind of shoehorned my brother into the trip. He pay, so my brother bought a ticket on the same flight. Kimmel flew me first class. My brother bought a ticket at the back of the plane. Um, he crashed in my hotel room, and then when it came time to go to dinner, I tried to like sneakily be like. Oh, by the way, my brother's like in town visiting his friend. Do you mind if do you mind <laughs> I would have done the same shit. Do you mind if he comes with us? Because at, at dinner, if I remember right, at dinner it was uh we went to Soho House in, in West Hollywood. Um on the way to dinner, uh Kim we're uh Kimmel's we're, we're passing by this billboard of the hills and uh Kimmel uh uh just turns to me and he's like, Do you wanna fuck one of the Hills girls while you're out here? No. And I was like, What? He's oh. like I, he goes, I can make that happen. And I was like, what? And then he just starts laughing. I was like, oh, my oh, God. Jesus. Jesus. I was Jesus like, oh, Christ. God. Dude, I, a guy like me yeah, would be right. like, yeah. yeah. I would have said yes. I like, oh, oh, yeah. Well, I guess I would. I was about to ask. Um, so then we, you know, yeah, I'm like 22. Uh, Wait, so you knock on his door. I knock on his door. And he, he answers the door. He's just like, yeah. Uh, he's just like, what's up, man? And I'm like, what is going on? I remember the Lakers were playing, uh, cause this must've been May or June ish. Like I hadn't fully graduated yet, but I was about to graduate college. Uh, there's a, there's a Lakers game on his, he had at the big, to this day, still the biggest TV I've ever seen hung on his wall. It was mounted. It was like a 120 inch TV that was mounted on the wall, Jeez. just right in his living room. Um, and he's and, and I just like you know it was it was one of those deals. It's like yeah, of course you're just a normal dude with a normal house. But like the way I built it up in my head was like his butler was going to answer the door. Yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. Going to be, you know, um, and yeah, and and so I sat there. I I just like he he got me like a beer, and I'm just like staring at the beer the whole time. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing out here? Like, what is going on? What is the point of this? Uh, and then we went to dinner right after, and my brother met us. But the the whole reason I wanted my brother to come to dinner is because Kimmel told me it was it was me him. Uh, Corolla, um, Jesus. Uh, Simmons was there. It was, uh, uh, Michael Davies. Who's one of the men in blazers now who started, uh, yeah, uh, yeah I've heard of him. Uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Um, and then I forget who else, uh, Daniel Kellison, I think who's like one of Kimmel's production part, but, but it was That's like, a weak ratio. I'm like looking around the, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Not a lot of women at the, uh, <laughs> at the table, but, uh, he told me like all these people are going to be there. And I was like, I'm going to shit my pants at this yeah. dinner. And I need my brother there just to like, just to every so often look at him, just be like, what older is, or younger brother? He's older. Okay. He's three years older. Um, so yeah, I did, I did this whole LA trip. Um, it blew my mind. The, the other, the other thing I remember is, uh, as we were leaving, Zac Efron and Vanessa Hudgens passed us at, at Soho House. They were the it and couple at the they time. They were kind of the it couple. Uh, Zach Lord. stops Kimmel and is just like, what's up, man? What's going on? And like all this sort of thing. And they're just like chatting. I'm just like standing there just like, but not my head. Like, yeah, my just beer. kind of in just the like, What's up, guys? Uh, <laughs> and then uh, uh, he, he, uh, Zach Efron was like, I got to come on the show soon. And Kimmel's like, yeah, 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 we'll make that happen. And then they just leave and he just turns to me. He's like, that kid's not coming on my show. So that is like, amazing that. that like that happens. Yeah. 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 Um, and I, so I'm just like, I, I just, I'm just like blown away by this whole experience. I, I go on a plane back to Ohio and I'm like, I think I'm going to move to Hollywood and be like a comedy writer. I got like, I don't know. I'm going to, I guess I'm just like inserting myself. What Jimmy answers Kimmel. did you get from yeah, him? Like, like, was it an interview? Not really. or it was, like... it was so weird. Cause like I, I went to, uh, I went to his beach house with his wife as well. And we did like, I remember, I remember, so a, I remember a sitting, night. Uh, yeah, d dude, I, I, I went to the Kimmel show. I was in the writer's room the whole lead up to the show. We watched the show. We went to the after party. The next day, we, we all went to the beach together. Uh, hmm. I I remember Julie Louis-Dreyfus calls Kimmel, and I'm sitting on his couch at his beach house, and he's like, let me take this real quick. He's like, Julia, what's up? And I'm again, I'm just having like this moment of like, where the fuck am I? Yeah. Um, and then I go back to Ohio, and it's like I gotta just like go back into the world I came from. Wait, so you do like a full bachelor party weekend? Kind thing. of, yeah. And is he like leading you on? Like, yeah, you're probably yeah. Gonna get he's, this he's job. I, I think I think what it ultimately was was like a feel out thing of like you seem funny on the internet, but are you internet funny? Are you real life funny? Yeah. Like, are you a good hang? That's all a, that sort that's of very important for yes. success here as well. Right. Um. So I I go back to Ohio. I'm like I think I'm gonna move to L. A. I think I'm gonna be a comedy guy. And then Simmons calls me one day and he's like, We're, I, I, ESPN's giving me a dump truck of money to start a website. I want you to be my college basketball guy. Um, 
And then I was like, I kind of want to do the Kimmel thing. He's like, no, 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 trust me. This is better off for you. And in the end, he's kind of right because I, I think if I would have, you know, like I did carve out a good niche for myself in college basketball and all that. But uh, that was kind of the sliding doors moment for me. It was like basically I was in a custody battle between Jimmy Kimmel and Bill Simmons, who wanted to pay me twenty five thousand dollars to work for them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take that twenty five and move so, to L A. Yeah, and that was my that was like the one moment in time where I was like, if I wanted to be like, am I do I think I'm going to be a comedian or do I want to be the guy that's like, I got these takes on nineteen year olds playing basketball, and I chose the nineteen year olds playing basketball. So anyway, I don't know if that's an interesting it, story. It is. It really scary. is. That was the closest I came to like being a quote-unquote comedy guy sure so, but, but so. if those weren't the options like what was your path gonna be mm. what were you gonna fall back on i was uh i don't know i was I, I i went to ohio state i was a math major my first year because uh i thought i wanted to be a doctor um and i i didn't want to do chemistry so i was like i got to do a nerd major i did i picked math i remember the specific assignment was a professor said uh go home and draw four dimensions on a piece of paper and bring it back. You know, you take the weekend, draw four dimensions and bring it back. I stared at the paper for like an hour and I was like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I decided then and there, like, I can't do math. Uh, and then I joined, th this was like kind of after I joined the basketball team and it was becoming a pain in my ass trying to do basketball and like actual, you know, like when you're all, as you know, I'm sure Kyle, maybe not, but like being an athlete, it's a lot easier to just, uh, not major in math so yeah i couldn't imagine yeah i didn't know that was a major yeah just math just in math. general <laughs> so i went to my the the academic advisor of the basketball team i said uh, i don't want to do math anymore he goes what do you want to do what do you want to be i said i want to be a businessman and he's like that's not a job but like math like, like, like business is way more major job. Math. Yep, that's math a job i was like i don't know i kind of want to do business i just want to be like a rich like business dude uh, and he's like, that's not really a thing. You got to declare a major within business. And I just said, what's the easiest one? And he said, marketing. And I was like, done, let's do marketing. Uh, and then I never, like once my blog kind <clears> of, <throat> excuse me, like became semi-popular, I thought that makes more sense to kind of see where that will go rather than trying to take a marketing degree around Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I didn't really have a backup plan. It was just kind of like, I'm going to keep like tweeting jokes and trying to, yeah, see, you know, I don't know how long I can do this where people will give a shit about, you know, who I think might win the Big Ten this year, but I'm going to just keep doing it and see. And I, I, I do remember having thoughts like <clears throat> when I was like 29 thinking if I'm still doing this when, I, when I'm 40, someone put a bullet in my brain that like this is insane that like this would be my job. And I got I got four years <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to get out of it. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's a. Uh, that's pretty much it. So, do, yeah. do you ever look back at your old shit and cringe? All the time. Yeah. yeah is that, I, uh, like, how, what's all the, the time. What's the What's the timeline for you guys with that? Like, what What's the like? Is it like three weeks? Because like sometimes sometimes I do that where I'm like I think something's very funny and then like a month later I'm like oh, it's shit, insane. That was... I think in the tw like late Twitter era, oh, it yeah. how fast things move and become unfunny. Mm -hmm. Like things that like were funny for a while, like will be played out in yeah a month i so got like things from four years ago are just like i can't even look at what yeah I was doing. yeah when i'm like creatively tapped i try to like scroll back and like maybe i said something that like i haven't talked about at work yeah and i'm looking back and it's like i hate myself yeah. and i used to tweet shit that i didn't even think was funny that i knew would go viral instead <laughs> yeah. and that was just the worst version Wait, of we, that. we were in the viral ball era of twitter yeah okay where yeah where you once you get the the ball rolling it's super easy to kind of like craft the you right words figured out the algorithm yeah, a little yep. bit yeah so the numbers were going crazy but it, like we weren't we didn't even care like we didn't even think our product was that's why good. i i've gotten to the point where i'm so disillusioned with twitter because uh i vividly remember and not only do i remember but that was what was what drew me to twitter was the exact opposite of trying to go viral it was like just being as weird as possible and being just like you know you have this confined medium with, with which with which to work you have so many characters there's no videos there's no pictures there's no anything else uh and the way you stand out is by just being bizarre almost and somewhere along the line it got flipped and now it's like being weird is actually like not good and i don't know i i don't really fully and i just like twitter became scary to me so i just like pulled back and don't yeah do as much. yeah no so. i get that completely yeah 
but you guys were you guys cracked the cracked the code I, I'm the same way like what what what'll fuck me up now though is that you have you get those like Facebook memory things which I'm not on Facebook anymore but like whatever that concept is of like just something that will remind you of this tweet you had or this yeah. post you had like four years ago and without failure like that was terrible and awful and not funny at all um but then what makes you think that like it, it, it what'll fuck me up is like whatever i post right now that i, I think, think is about funny, that all the time it, all uh, like i know in the future i'm going to think this is not yeah. funny yeah, so like, what, yeah. And I'm almost like neutering myself yeah, now. Yeah, it's like yeah. future Nick is going to hate this pussy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's, our confidence is so pathetic. Yeah. Which is like almost. So how do you, how do like, so let, let me uh, be our own therapist here. Like what, why are we in this business? Why are the three of us in this business where we get in front of a microphone and, you know, for, for all the, 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 the line of thinking that what makes us think that we're good enough to do stand up, And yet we're kind of, what makes us good enough to think that we could sit down in this chair and talk and people um, <laughs> we're still working. I don't know it, if we do, but we get to wake up at like noon. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's, that's the reason. Right. Yeah. What, what would you no, guys, no. Have, what would you guys have done if not for this? Do, do you still want to do this? Is this the long-term play? Yeah. yeah, yeah I, love no, it. I, I, I do guess, love it. Yeah. I love doing it and yeah. it's fun. I think and it, the, uh, the blogging and like the crafting, like, Twitter based internet based content like in that in like written form would have got soul sucking once I tried to like force it as a job when yeah. you have an idea it's amazing and it's just like yeah. everything's falling into place it's it's the best but when you're having to like force an idea it's horrible yeah and it's, it's like never good homework. and people can tell yeah um but now I love this job yeah like, like I'm haunted by like having to go back and like code what well, is that what you were doing before? yeah I was a web designer how do you get into that? How do you I majored do you, in you just, it? Yeah, yeah, I majored in uh, uh, graphic and web design. Really? And then, yeah, and I was a web designer at Ohio State. I knew that. I knew that yeah, you yeah. were you lived in Columbus. Yeah, four realize. years. So you worked for the university. Yeah. And you did what for the university? I was a web designer. Like, I was what does coding. that mean? Like, what I was like that, making, like, I was designing new pages. I was doing the layout of the pages. So, like, you go sure. to OSU.edu. Your yeah. Senior oh, work. I was do. I was the Department of, Educa of Education, and uh, that was like I was working under a art director and just coding it and like uh ohio state or any university is really strict where it has to be like everything has to be captured it was like a lot of mindless stuff i didn't it wasn't as creative as you'd think yeah um but you know it was fine but i like i'm haunted by like having to go back like the idea and that's when i started back. tweeting because i was so fucking bored and then i got in trouble at work for <laughs> more focusing more on twitter than this classic yeah yeah, yeah. did you like columbus you like loved it. it's my favorite city in the country a great city not no sorry yeah it's my yeah. favorite i want to move back german village wow i want to move by, i want to live by the book loft wow what do you what do you love about it so much it's like the perfect combination of small town and big town and it's almost split in half exactly. yeah it has it is a city that like they they figured out how much of something do you need for it to be uh like like you know how, how many if, if, if how many Italian restaurants do you need that are good and how many steak and then they they draw the line right there and yeah like not a not one more than that they do just exactly what right they there. need to do it's it's just to get to the point where we're good enough and then just hit the brakes yeah and keep it right there and yeah I I I I, 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 I love it yeah and if there's this, not this like is the, by the way this is an example of uh, just having a normal conversation with the two of you and. You think you're fucking? No, not you fucking with you at all. No, like, I'm sitting like, here like if if I have to, like, if I'm raising here, a family they? one day, I would like to do it in Columbus. Wow. Yeah. How about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't have like that air of Midwest like grime that other bigger cities. I feel mm. like like Pittsburgh. It's like it still feels like a hidden gem too, even though it has like 1.1 million people. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh it, it's yeah. You're right. It doesn't have like the Rust Belt feel to it quite at all. The, no Rust not, Belt or like, but like like the other Ohio cities or Midwest cities or yeah. Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's it. That's that's a good. Yeah. yeah, you're making me want to move back to Columbus. It's great. Yeah, I, no, we're I, here. We're here now. And then I, wait, I, what, what 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 how how was the Chicago decision for you guys? Pretty easy. It was. Yeah. What 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 goes there, like what made it easy? It's just like that's where that's where the yeah, yeah. the yak is like our the biggest yeah, thing we do, show. and it's going yeah. there and getting a crazy I mean, office. Yeah, and like be, working more. with Big Cat, yeah. that's fucking great. Like that's guaranteed success. You guys move in a couple weeks. Yeah, right? yeah. Is that correct. Yeah. Um, do you think the the city itself? Like, do you have reservations about that? Do you are you worried about like, um, yeah, the city of Chicago, like 
I don't know. It has a reputation. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> Um, are, are, yeah, are you, do you guys like New York? Is that? Yeah, New York was awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I loved it. But you, you can't, you know, you, I'm 31 and I don't think I was living like a 31 year old there. Yeah. You know, tiny apartment, kind of gross, but like, I'd ha- what could I do? Yeah. Like, uh, Culturally, I fit in more here by yeah. far. Yeah. I, yeah. I completely agree with that. That's yeah. why I'm, I'm excited. But the, it's here, probably yeah. a way bigger culture shock for you going from L.A. Yeah, it, it's it's it, Chicago and L.A. are very different places. Yeah, yeah. yeah the Chicago like the, feels the humans, similar. Every every aspect is different. Chicago does feel similar to New York. It just like has nicer people, and they're not all on top of you at all times. They're uglier. Yeah, they're, they are uglier. way <laughs> uglier. <laughs> um. <laughs> They are uglier. No, I did. Uh, I did a quick pass around the block. Uh, yeah, that's that. I mean, the, L.A. It's there's a lot of beautiful people out there. Mm-hmm. That is that. So that I I won't lie. I did notice that about Chicago. When what what would you put yourself like? You're you're a, you're a Chicago ten, Mark. No, 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 no. no, no. But in L.A., <laughs> like, what were you? Uh, what were you in a eight point five nine? In L.A., so being taller, I have that working for me. Uh, I I you know like I think that. What women say that that adds like a point or two, just simply for being sure. Tall. T- um, LA is a shorter city, I would guess. Yeah, a- actors, uh, actors, a lot of musicians, actors, or models. T- yeah. Have yeah. you ever looked at the Fallout Boy lineup? I think the tallest <laughs> yeah. one's like five four. Yeah, me. yeah. And his last name's that. Stump. But then, but then <laughs> you run into uh, what will emasculate you real quick is going to uh, like beach volleyball scenes. Like the you 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 just go to the beach, like you get invited to a beach volleyball game and you're like yeah I'll do, you know I can I've played volleyball yeah, I'm before staying away life. from that <laughs> dude you show up Far there away. and it's just like a bunch of like six seven six eight chiseled dudes that yeah and then and then they're like just banging the women that are like six they're two always banging and they're them. all like they're always I've banging. long and they're said all, that and I'm just standing there like. I, I where did I go wrong mm-hmm. in life? How did I not get this life? I don't understand how men's volleyball players aren't the American football players of the world. Men's volleyball, if you watch it on television, is just absolutely insane. It yeah, just, like, they are so it's yeah. Just, it's they just they should like be superstars. It, it is slam ball. It's just dudes Back dunking on over each and other over and over. And, and they're, over they're and gods. Over. They're gods. I uh, not like, e- their their faces are good looking. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, even yeah, their, yeah, their faces. What the fuck workout is that? Their bodies. Dude, I remember uh, one time at, at, at Ohio State, the volleyball team was uh, using our – so they, they practiced and played in, like, a different arena – but one, there were every so often they would use like our training room at uh, at our uh, practice facility. So they would come like get their ankles taped or do whatever they need to do. And I remember one time um, I went, I got to practice like kind of early, and I was going to just like throw some shots up or whatever. And I go out to the gym, the 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 main gym floor at Ohio State, and the volleyball team was just kind of congregating. Like I guess some of them were just like waiting for their turn to get their ankles taped or iced or whatever, whatever the hell they were doing. They're just kind of lingering. And I brought my ball out and it was like putting up shots and the ball bounced down to one of them. And it was, this was a dude that was like six, two and he just scoops it up, takes one dribble, like touches the back of his head and dunks like so easily. <laughs> and then like the, all they start passing around, all these guys are windmilling. And like, I, I was like, like they're all like literally the 10 best dunkers on the campus <laughs> are the men's volleyball team. And then whoever yeah. the best dunker on the basketball team is, he's number 11. And my jaw is just on the floor. I'm like, dude, these guys are insane athletes. How is this not? What is the deficiency there? I think the product is even very entertaining. I don't. So one of the things that I've been told about men's volleyball, like what, what, what can sometimes make women's more entertaining is that men's don't have rallies. And I think that like, mm. so like if you watch it, it's just, they do dunk on each other, but the, it's just over in a snap of yeah. a finger. And I guess what makes volleyball sort of compelling is like the, the, the diving rally, yeah. saves. Yeah. It's like, oh shit, I thought they were going to spike it there. But so you just men are it. just like too good. They're almost too good. They're too good for their own sport. Yeah. yeah. And they just drop the hammer way too quickly to where it's just kind of a, yeah. But, um, I so humans evolved out of out past volleyball. Past volleyball. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's that's kind of what what uh, what other sports are you guys into that are weird? Is there anything else that you have like that you f- you feel um I mean wrestling you, are you are you into you're into wrestling, right? Like you actually watch it and and follow it and Yeah. So are, I, you say I you're guess a fan of of wrestling from a young age now that I look back, I guess I don't want to downplay or trivialize a disorder, but it had like an autistic obsession with memorizing and knowing like 
the towns and schools everyone's from. I would go through the program and know like the city in Pennsylvania, the school. You're talking about wrestling and the results. Okay, you would yeah. memorize the results. Like the, na- so, the names, the results. Let me understand this. So you're in high school in West Virginia, and you would just like look up wrestlers in Iowa. I would spend eight hours. I would to go to the Pennsylvania youth wrestling or the Pennsylvania high school. I would go to each state's individual uh, website, look at results, brackets. <laughs> I would look at brackets for hours, and then as I got older, I realized I don't even like the actual watching the sport. It's very boring. So I love it when like two, there's a great match. Okay. But there's like a 50-50 chance that the great match is just going to be like a stall fest of two guys who are too good to even like take shots. Yeah. Like, like what, what's the – like Floyd Mayweather boxing where he's – It's the it's same thing. Same yeah, like yeah. These guys are so defensive. good defensively that no one's even going to like op, uh, even attempt offense. Okay. So it's just a, a snooze fest. Did you, do you actually like participating in wrestling when you were doing it? I absolutely hated it. You, 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 your re- wrestling career, you look back, even when you were good, even when you were... I hated every practice. <laughs> what were you in high school, like 150 and 5? 150 and 9. Okay. But, so like, I so w- even as you're kicking everyone's ass, you still were like, I kind of hate that this well, is... Because it got to a point where I go to this like tournament that no one cares about and I yeah. beat these guys that I'm supposed to destroy. Like there's no like I I have to pin or tech fall this guy or it's not a win. Yeah. So then it And these are like m- small southern West Virginia high schools <laughs> where like they they're they're wrestling right. you back in jeans. <laughs> they, no, they would, I, I, like, I wanted my podium picture of me on the top to be cool and like uh, it's just like sheep fuckers and je- like jeans. It's like, wear your warm ups on the podium so it looks like I had like a decent bracket and you have like guys in jeans and boots and like a dip can. <laughs> so I can't even hang up my podium picture. <laughs> how do you, how do you get into wrestling then? Like, the, did you love it at any point in time? Like there had to been something that drove. Were, were you pushed into? It? I will it- say like the the feeling of winning in like a one-on-one combat sport in like, that's pretty cool uh, that's like a that's pretty feeling. cool yeah. yeah yeah that would be pretty cool i've i've never i've never experienced that the cauliflower would... has to be worth it yeah was it was uh i, I would i would I kill to have that to just go into a bar for one what, night what's your what's your crowning athletic achievement nick um i was a camp counselor at the wheeling park <laughs> pool and one of the kids i was t- i was talking to a girl uh by the high dives and one of the kids in the camp threw a, a splash ball at her, and I just like caught it right before it hit her. That's pretty sick. Yeah, she fucked my That's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that night. That's um, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> um, no, I I have to have something. Yeah, like how how are I? I guess it's sort of odd to me. It just it, it's foreign to me. I should say I should I shouldn't say it's odd, but it'd be foreign to me. Uh, for you to be interested in sports, but not necessarily participate in them. Yeah, my um, dad's a fanatic, and so I grew yeah, up just watching kinda, it. And I would, uh, it broke his heart, but I was just, I, f- I fucking sucked at all sports. Um, did you try? Like, you did you did you, or were you just like from I the played gate, baseball like, growing up? Though. Never yeah. good. I've never been good at a sport. You just never. You, yeah. I feel like the this generation doesn't have the issue because they're like they're not as expected as we were. Because like when I was a kid, every kid played like little right, league baseball. Right. Even so, and there was a lot of very like awkward moments when the kid like who never got a hit got up to bat. Right. But but that was like a rite of passage almost when I was like, like yeah, when I was growing up, if you sucked at something, you still it's like you I'm still so, did you it still every it. year. Unfortunately, <laughs> it was so to, painful for the parents, yeah. yes. for everyone yes. involved. Yeah. But Nick wasn't at that level. Of, he was decent. Um yeah. yeah, it was just I was I was a late bloomer when it came to any sort of coordination. Yeah. Like now I could like you know, I was just in like the uh, Steelers softball game, and got a hit. But then I hit. ran like a fucking moron. <laughs> it was like, uh. so you know, it's it's it's. I'm still not. I'm. I haven't peaked yet. Um, how, how? I'm sure you guys have sized up the office though. Like you, you, you know, like do you? I was in I, Barstool I vs. America. This office. Is, <laughs> I was in yeah. Barstool vs. America <laughs> two say, summers yeah. ago, and I won every competition. <laughs> Everyone, yeah, because yeah. I, I, I've been, I've been trying to like uh, figure. I, I've been sizing everybody up. I don't even know if you're the best hooper. That's what I know. I know. Yeah. I, as, as we're as we're leading to this new uh, office where there's just going to be so many things going on, I'm trying to size up everyone and figure out who's good at what and all that sort of thing. And uh, uh, your uh, Pat Bev is probably number one. 
May, yeah, there's an argument to be made there that Pat Bev's a better basketball player than me. Um, I think the argument's probably that he's in the NBA. And, yeah, and I'm not. I think that's probably is your goal to like made, exert but. competitive energy. I don't know. I'm trying, to, I'm trying. Yeah, to, like, would you ever? I'm would you ever do any of like the? I know you're kind of like. Well, I'm doing. You, the, we're doing the bowling. Are you guys all doing the? Yeah, we're yeah. doing the bowling thing, and yeah. that's what I'm trying to figure out because I I do feel like, uh, not to not to artificially put myself at the cool kids lunch table here, but like I do feel like. The three of us are similarly aligned, and how for we, sure. you know, like, like I said earlier, like yeah. you're trying to thread the needle of like I don't want to try too hard, but I also don't want to embarrass myself. So I'm trying to like figure out where I fit in with that because I, as I've come to Barstool, I've never really. This will be like my first sort of group deal where like I don't know if there's an expectation for me to be great at bowling but also i don't want white Sox dave to smoke me so, either, you what, know what, what, so yeah. what you need I'm to, trying to figure out how hard to try and how much to care and i used sort of to be like uh i used to forget that it was for entertainment purposes yeah. and so i would like lose my cool in like fucking trivia or like if i lost trivia it would yeah ruin my, and now i'm just like let's just let's have one let's joke just, for it yeah but like you're going to be in the bar barstool ecosystem way way more now with this new office and have you yeah. thought about like if you're ever, are you going to do like like any of the reality shows or are you going to do like, I don't know. What's your advice on this? Cause I, my I, first year I said yes to everything, but I didn't have, I shouldn't have been hired. I didn't have like a following by any means. So you, yeah. So I, 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 I want to be a team player, but I also don't want to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. 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 I want to be a team player. I just don't want to work more than is that I'm contractually obligated to work. But it, I, I think if you think it would be fun, yeah, then do it, then do it. Yeah. But uh, that, that's what I'm trying to figure out is uh, I, I do want to – I'm going to be in the office every – we all are, right? Like that's yeah. part of the stipulation of the every new day. deal. Yeah. So I, I do want to be in there, and I do want to step outside my comfort zone. That's one of the appeals of working a bar stool to me is that uh, up until I came to this company, I was put in the box of, like, you're the college bet. Like, you know, I, I, every so – like, if I was working at the Ringer or Fox, I'd be like, I can I go on some show and talk about Ohio State football? And they're like, but – wait a second. Ohio State football? But right. You're the, but, but you're the basketball guy. Yeah. Why would you talk about football? And I'm like, what? Because I watch every goddamn second of this football team, and I'm angry about various things, and I want to, mm -hmm. I want a platform to go crazy about it. Um, so that is an appeal of working here, is stepping outside the comfort zone and doing more things. But also, uh, I'm scared that when I actually do step outside, I'll just be, I'll just be like, ah, ex this is why we don't do this. This is why we don't step yeah. outside the comfort Every zone. Every once in a while you'll this get is, that. But I think, yeah. I think there's more positives than negatives. Like everything I've done for the most part, like there's annoying parts of it, Yeah. but it's been worth it. And your, um, your tolerance for discomfort will skyrocket. Yeah. It, out that, of like, it'll be forced. Yeah. To. So yeah, like, yeah. you just, you you have the first like embarrassing picture of yourself that, that, yeah, there's that is that yeah, how like, you a look, picture where yeah, you look you get fat over the, or yeah. you have titties in a picture <laughs> yeah. i used to, like i still pretty much only wear solid black like just like <laughs> like if there's like an emblem on the shirt i'm like that's a little much you'll have but, angle, like, haunting now, angles yeah. that are captured and yeah. talked about it on mass and then like <laughs> we went to like uh province town uh massachusetts which is like gay mecca yeah. Um, and we were wearing red speedos and I'm just like, wh that just happened like, like overnight. Yeah. Like where I just, you just kinda, yeah. You just kind of just do it. You just, you lose it. shame. You just lose the shame. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to worry about. So you got to toss out. I do you, have, you, the, you've, you've attached yourself to Brandon Walker. So that's a really good first step. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can Huge mistake. I mean, there is there is uh, discussions about uh, some doing like duo competitive type things, right? Like, yeah. So like I guess the understanding uh, is like we're gonna do what, what? What is this? Like fucking? You're access. like attached to like your brand now. So like Kyle would be like my partner in like a competition. At what the are we playing? Now. Like double dare and like I think there's you know, gonna like, be like uh, I'll Donnie. Take the physical challenge, but also there's I think Chef Donnie's gonna be like running chopped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so it's you and Brandon. We're just yeah, Bre Brandon and I are. Making God knows what. No, nah, he's the best, actually. I, I like Brandon yeah. a lot. Mm. Well, by the time this comes out, pro God rest his soul. <laughs> yeah, um. <laughs> I, uh, I just wish Brandon liked his coworkers enough to mask up and stay six feet apart. Good but God. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. he, he is too selfish to do that and has COVID. I'm so tired of having Again. to vax him another, uh, <laughs> another uh, 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 Photoshop another vax card for him um, over and over. Being West Virginia guys, Bob Huggins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
dude, he didn't know what Need city he was in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you know that has happened. Bob probably. Huggins loves Columbus as well because when he got pulled over, he was like, I'm in Columbus, right? Yeah, like, he that, drank in, his him, he drank in Pittsburgh in and he was just like, I'm going to get dr- so drunk, I'm going to think I'm in fucking Columbus. Yeah. Is that, that that happened? Yeah, he got pulled <laughs> over in Pittsburgh and he thought he was in Columbus. Yeah. Is this the same day or night as the incident? Or the, yeah. The, what are you talking about? The slurs? The slurs. Yeah, the that slurs. Was the, this that was, was the week prior. This Yeah, the slurs was like a week or two. 10 a.m.? Yeah, um, and then he got pulled over, uh, and and yeah, was was. There's a lot of beer cans in his car. He said he was taking them to be recycled, um, and they, that he wasn't. He hadn't been drinking. Uh, yeah. But then the, the the crazy part of the story. I mean, there's a lot of crazy parts of the story, but like the the part that like took it into like a, a just completely absurd level was that uh, he gets fired or he's no longer the coach. Whatever. Uh, I, I guess he technically resigns. Y- yeah. They accept his resignation, obviously, because they're like, we're gonna fire you anyway, and then like a few days pass and he's like, I didn't actually resign at all. I'm still the coach of West Virginia. And now he's like, I guess going to sue the school. I yeah. Guess or stage a coup or some shit. Yeah. Like I could see him like, uh, remember when Takiro Kobayashi got booted from the hot dog eating contest <laughs> yeah, and yeah. he like rushed to the stage. He's yeah, going to do that. Um, the it first sucks West because Virginia's first game, he's just going to show up. And, I haven't been hopeful for a team in so long with like these transfers and everything yeah. happening. Like, uh, WV was doing this thing where they can't really compete financially with some of these bigger schools, so they've been putting all their NIL towards basketball. Because if you get oh, one I wasn't player, aware of that. If you get I one, uh, that's what I've heard. If you yeah. get one player that hits in basketball, it's way better than football. It is true, but better return yeah. on investment yeah. for sure. Because one player can change everything in basketball, whereas football, it's like you get a star quarterback. It's who's going to block Still for him, who's going to play defense, who's going to. And they yeah. can't compete with those schools, so they were going to try to do it that way. Um, and now it's just all falling apart. Like he would have had a fucking statue there. Yeah. And he overnight. I was gonna say, is he, is he the most beloved coach in West Virginia history? Yeah, Not you guys anymore. Tell me. Like is he is like uh, as far as Nealon, like, probably now wise? would t- like be the most uh, success wise. He's been to like what just some elite eights, final four. He went final to final four. four yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty ten. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, he he's got to be. He's, he's, he's from be, Morgantown. He went to West Virginia. Yeah. I think like all of that plays into it as well. Played, he would have had a statue in front of the Coliseum, yeah. and now just what what an implosion. What, so living in Morgantown, having his money is probably boring. Or That's is, what I'm fascinated. Know. Like what um, he's going to do next. I don't know if he's going to resurface at a. I, I keep saying he should go to a Mac school. That just feels right to yeah. me. Yeah, like or Huggins Liberty. Is, yeah, or yeah, yeah. He's at Liberty. Um, he, I don't know if he had expensive tastes. I know him and Holgerson live next to each other. I think they just drink. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what led to like he probably just binge drinks. I think he has an actual problem. Definitely. Um, because like when he called into that radio station drunk, it was 10 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what that uh, was kind of my commentary on the whole ordeal is like we all we are we being the college basketball community glamorized and romanticized Bob Huggins being the drunk uncle. Not, I yeah. Don't know but it's like. Like Bob Huggins was always the guy. If, if you he go was to the any, John Daly of college yeah, basketball. Yeah, you go to any Final Four party when Bob Huggins would walk in. Like everybody that's talking to each other would just like turn their heads, and we'd all just sort of gravitate towards Huggy Bear. And he he just like post up against the wall, tell stories for hours. Everybody's laughing at every word, and we're just like this guy's all. And and the reason he was awesome is because he is the guy you want to grab a beer with. And yeah, like, kind of just like. Like that whole ethos that he had was something that we all celebrated, and he encapsulated. And he, then he was now he, here we are. He was yeah. what WVU kind of is, like the party, right. the rough, right, fat, right, um, <laughs> <laughs> the pullovers. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the yeah. That's uh, it's a, it's it sucks. Mm, yeah, that yeah, sucks. All right, anything else? Is that a, I don't know. What what else, TJ? What else do we need to talk yeah, about? Yeah, TJ, what do you guys? got, man? What do you got? I don't know. What's what's next? I mean, you're having one of the worst days of your life, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm, I'm going through it right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, dude. You're like a different shade of, of human right now. Yeah, too. I think I'm gaunt. Yeah, dude. You good? Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll make it through. <laughs> you want to go get a drink? Sure. There we go. <laughs> yeah, TJ, you're moving. Uh, you, you, you two, uh, Kyle and TJ, you guys are living like the same building. What is, what is this building? Because everybody just keeps saying, it's... like, we're living in the dorm. It, it's pr- and then it's, it's just- two apartment buildings adjacent to each other that like fifteen barstool employees are living. <laughs> at. But you said you've taken RA duties. <laughs> I'm gonna be the RA. Yeah. Is Make- this? Yeah, I'm curious how this is gonna work. No how, drinking, how- making sure no girls are staying over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's gonna feel like that. 
the usual. Like, we're, we're all going to be walking to what, work. What, to... what was your college experience like being an athlete? We were so State? bitter that we didn't get any attention. The wrestlers. Like, like, the, like the wrestlers as compared yeah. to the football players or the basketball right. players. Did we anybody were... go to Kent State football games, though? Not really, but <laughs> that's how bad it was. Yeah, oh, wow. I remember like sharing a locker room with the women's basketball team, oh, and like really? they were like they would like pet us. <laughs> did you go? Did you go to? Col- <laughs> they were so tall though. They were, they were like the <laughs> tallest. I think they had the record for the tallest women's team in the NCAA. Is that actually true? Or they did were you just so think that? tall. And yeah. It was like I was. Yeah, like, yeah their, their center was like six one. I was like a mid range height guy in wrestling like I, when kyle has his friends in town <laughs> he walks in and he is you look like snow white dude yeah. like you you are towering over your boys five two Our, five two alfredo five three dell and five four mac <laughs> also kyle's so, two best friends were named mac and dell and Del, he didn't yeah, realize i, I just never uh <laughs> we, we were stronger than that <laughs> and that silly the, so so when, you, really. when a group of wrestlers go out, are you sizing guys up? Or are you uh, it, uh, are, so are, are guys sizing you up? Fifty percent of them are going out to fight, to yeah. fisticuffs with a bigger man. Yeah, um, and it's always just a sad sight. Even yeah. when they win, it's <laughs> that's that's tough. Yeah. Like when a five, I assume you're four not that guy. Way. You're not that way. You're, you're not. A, you're, I don't know. No. When, when that would happen, and you're out with your wrestling buddies, and they just get into a bar fight, what what are you doing? Are you just you running you, for the exit? Are no, you kind of you got like, to watch and like act like you were like you would have helped if you needed. You, you you strategically show up just like ten seconds late. To yeah. Everything. You wait till yeah. like the dust is settled, and then you. But it was s- never just like fighting. It was like. If Someone he was like going up and like peeing in their shampoo if it was at a house party. Classic. So, so you're were you the funny guy of the group? Are wrestlers funny guys? Um I was like I was like the Twitter funny guy who but weird in real life. Weird funny in real life. Yeah, like when wrestlers show up at the house party and there's swimmers there and soccer players there and basketball play like you know, like all the sports are there. Like how are the wrestlers standing out or do they stand? It's just like by trying like, to grapple with people, they like, get so drunk because it's like year months of sobriety and like extreme discipline. Then like your tolerance is loose. so low, and you're like so ready. You have the, all this yeah. pent up like aggression and masculinity to let out. So you just like like break things. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was bra- I was breaking things at like just to feel like I was part of the like the crew. Did uh did Kent State have a good party situation? Did you go to other school? It was like the Purdue to- of Northeast Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> that's just oh, great. here we go. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, like that's. Yeah, it was probably like, better than Akron, yeah, yeah. better than Cleveland State. Yeah, on par with Toledo. So, wh- where did you go if you wanted? To, did, did you go to other schools really ever to party? Not, OU, it was pretty OU fun. Was the move, right? like, OU was, was a the... lot more fun. That was far. Like we had a decent bar scene, like four yeah. bars that were fun, and yeah. like some house parties. That's we cool. met, like re met, because we went to the same little school together at a party in Morgantown, though. Yeah. And you gave, you gave me my old mixtape. Yeah. And I remember, like, we, we had an awkward conversation. And that yeah, was I was it. like, yo, your tweets are really funny. And you said, yours are too. And I didn't have a Twitter account at the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then you did, like, a I year later. I made one, yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah, saw yeah, the future. Yeah, yeah like, you called like, your shot. Too. You just don't yeah. realize it yet. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, yeah, do you, do you, do you like, uh, does part of you look back and say, like, I wish I would have had a more normal college experience? Or are you happy with... For, I think... Post college for a few years, yes, but now I'm like glad that, you know, from a, like a fitness standpoint, yeah, that I didn't drink so much, that I worked out hard for four years, yeah. So I guess did I you don't. did you ever get uh, fat after you left college or not? I got sh- portly. He was portly. Por- he was healthy. Yeah. Portly. I was that dr- happened to me when I was no longer like on a regimen. I no longer had a guy telling me at. 7 a.m. We're gonna show up. Yeah, here and we're so gonna do this. Then I'm like, uh, now I'm never gonna. Do yeah, it. I never yeah. did it, and then I just blew up so fast. Puffy. Yeah, like I um, drank all the time. You look great now, though. I mean, it, you look, you look, I'm body. back into lifting. I love, I love it now. You lift? Is that what you? Do? That's what you? Yeah, like, to a fault. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm too weak to. Yeah, we're past the what's yeah. what's the point? That's what yeah. I said. It's, I what a never, mindset! You're just yeah. giving up, like, oh, I'm in my 30s. I do. It's over. I at this point, well, I mean, in all honesty, I'm 36, so like, I'm getting to an age where I would it. 
I would much rather like if if the if the show of masculinity is say throwing a baseball as far as you can, I would much rather instead of throwing a baseball a hundred yards, I would rather throw the baseball 50 yards and not wake up the next morning, like having to ice my shoulder. Yeah. Ice, like I would like, t- so that's my way of saying like, I value mobility. I value like just th- literally my Instagram feed is just hip mobility exercises. That's that my algorithm is just oh. like hip mobility yeah, and then like fair. shoulder mobility. So I, I'm far more interested in like, I, I, I do chick workouts. I do Pilates. I do yoga. That, that's, <laughs> do, that's better you know I mean? then. Yeah, because I'm, I'm going to lose the mobility quick. The days of like loading up the barbell to like grunt out sets, like I just like I, – I, I, I dabble every so often. Like every, every so often I'll look in the mirror and I'll just go, you pussy. And I'll go to the <laughs> weight room and I'll load up the barbell and I'll start, you know, like busting out reps and I'll do that for a month. And then inevitably I'm just like, what am I doing? You know, like, what am I, I got the, I got these spaghetti arms. Like I'm never going to be, you know, what am I doing? And then I go back to like wanting to just like, you know, be able to touch my toes and yeah, you know, I guess do all that kind of I, what shit. What am so, I doing? So that's, that's where I'm at. Uh, you right look now. good. I'm, I think yours is good but, for your mentals though too. Yeah, it's, it, it is, it is. Are you listen to music when you lift or are you, uh, uh, I got deep natural. into this men's protocol. I don't even want to start, but um, I, I I got to a point where I was fasting from music. I was so upset. He was uh, I'm I don't want to speak for you, but you're not going to say it. He was big into uh, uh, keep keeping himself from experiencing dopamine. <laughs> And so you, I, I thought the okay. more that I fasted from dopamine, the, like the better the, my overall this levels. Is, would be. This is this uh, is wrestling mindset. It's like just torturing yourself. It's is extremist. That what it is? Like I I heard like you know fasting is good for food and um, <laughs> you wouldn't <laughs> if going you were sober. Having, if you were having a coffee in the morning, you wouldn't listen to music. If you listen to music, you wouldn't have a coffee. Right, because that's maxing out dopamine. Because I love the feeling of the caffeine rush, and I love the feeling of listening to my favorite song. And I would always do both. And like that is a uh, that's cloud nine. Yeah, for like an hour or thirty minutes, and then it's like, oh fuck, the rest of my day is never going to be that good or even close. Okay. So now I'm like, if I have coffee, no, no phone, no no dopamine boosts from the phone, from music, from pornography, if that was a thing. Um, from- you gave up Q-tipping. Q-tipping was felt too pleasurable. Um, <laughs> now I do Q-tips as a reward. If I finish all of my hygienic practices to a T, I get to Q-tip the ear. It's not joking. This was, <laughs> and let me tell you, this might not be ultimately beneficial, but yeah. in the moment, I was so obsessed that yeah. I was having a blast, and it was the illusion of productivity. He has a group of guys on the protocol. You should give it a shot for a week. Are you are you a clean freak? My um, like no, like, I'm a slob. But now I'm God. like, are, are there clean? Are you a clean freak? Is there anybody at Barstool? Oh, I'm yeah, worried I'm about this with the office. I, I like to be really organized. I clean my apartment's clean always. Okay, uh, that's that's. I make encouraging. my bed in the mornings. Yeah, I clean my sheets. But uh, but this has ha- this has led me to like now I I have to make my bed. I have to do the dishes. So it's helped me with like. So, so don't what, what is the uh, <laughs> what is the end? What is the uh, there doesn't have to be an end, I guess. But like, is there? Are, are we pursuing like self actualization through these? these methods are we is it like if i do this then maybe i will eventually um reach a point where i feel like i'm a functioning adult whereas like before i didn't really feel that way and then like maybe i'll re-enter normal society to where i can q-tip every day is there like some sort of to enjoy day-to-day life without necessarily anything good happening yeah are are you working towards this becoming habit is this the idea as well? Yeah, like yeah. This, this is all like absolutely this habit forming, and this is just it, who it's you are helped now? tremendously. Yeah. As much as I joke about it, and as yeah. stupid as I was with some of the areas, yes. Yeah, I'll never knock. I'll never knock. No, your life from the outside growth. looking in has improved. It's tenfold, right? Yeah. But, <laughs> but it's uh, it's a slippery you have waxy slope. ass ears. But you have waxy ears. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well. <laughs> This was great. How yeah, did this go? Fun. Did this yeah, go? Feel, yeah, yeah, this was yeah. good, dude. It felt like, I, dude. Chat I even more. forgot we were recording. I just thought we were chilling. You know, was that, that's the that's the thing about this show. I told you guys off air, but it's I'll, I'll say it again on air. Like I'm not like those other shows. No, our shows like, our show has a ton of rules. At, at this show, you just kind of you just kind of let it. I rip. noticed that it's like more like laid back. What are you going to do with during basketball season? Are you going to like button it up? 
I think I, I got to go back to the takes. I think that's what gets people. That's what puts butts in seats. Yeah. Is takes. I Are think, you going to start uh, TikToking? I got to. Yeah. How do we feel about TikTok in general? Uh, I, I, we don't have. I don't have a personal. I don't think you do. I wouldn't do it. No. I'm not like against it. No, it's entertaining. I feel um, an implicit pressure of working at this company. I think like Brandon, I, I, I'm fighting the you fight. You should do like 25% of what Brandon does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I kind of want to do the the big cat move of like doing it ironically, but we all know Dan like works himself into a shoot with everything and mm-hmm. it takes him like three days to where it's like no longer a bit. And he's like, actually, yeah. And now these ironic operating ones are on like, like the fifth take past yes. human. Yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's like, I don't really want to go down that road. Uh, Brandon's Brandon's brand is I, I guess that might be the move, but like I kind of watch Brandon shit and it's just kind of sad, and pathetic where he's like top five edge rushers in the SEC this year. Here we go. I got him right, right here. I'm like, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's he me. does a list because I yeah w- one of the talking about like having a takes being a sports guy like one of the things that I am horrendous at is like having the conviction. I guess it goes back to like the self confidence issues of like I I hedge a lot because I um, sports to me if if you sit down in this chair and just say like, here's how it is. Here's how it's going to be. This is the way this works. This team is better than this team. I think if you, if you actually are correct, then there's no reason to watch sports. And I think like being surprised by like, like, damn, I thought the, you know, I thought the the jets didn't have a good enough defense to go that far this year, but damn, they really surprised me. That's the joy of like watching sports. And so every time I fire off takes, I always, I don't do it because like I'm scared to be the freezing cold take guy. Mm-hmm. I do it because I genuinely think that like being 100 percent sure about something is fucking insane. Yeah, and I think like Same being able to. But you, down, but you yeah. have to be. You can't be like you can't pussyfoot it. Yeah, you can't pussyfoot it. So I think like that. So to that point, like doing what Brandon will sit down and just be like, they're frauds. They're not yeah. frauds. You know. Yeah. And I I can't get to that point because like if you told me like to rank the top five shooters in the Big Ten this year. I would just be like, I, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, because you be don't, a lot of different no guys. Like, you should make knows? your brand non takes then. Just like, yeah. have a TikTok, and I'm, I'm, today I'm naming 10 basketball players. Yeah, these yeah, are some dudes. Yeah, yeah. Start naming dudes. dudes. And people would <laughs> name a dude. listen. All right, so today we're naming dudes. Uh, all right, so at Purdue, And you can do that Zachary. every day. You guys yeah. know that dude, right? Yeah, he's still there. Uh, 10 dudes. <laughs> name 10 dudes, yeah. That's kind of a funny. You guys are talking me into maybe start. Dude, you dudes. should put out, you should put out your first 10 dude list. You gotta, like, yeah, drop your 10 dudes. It's not a bad idea. You should have 10 dudes be, of the week. Because that is yeah. that is an authentic way for me to use TikTok. It's and then it's like, a talking point. Just be like, I didn't sleep. You don't have a... I woke up. These are the 10 dudes I thought of. That rocks. And, and I think and here's people why would I love that. People might love that. Yeah, I would. And then people no, people still get mad. He's like, that was your dude six months how ago. Was that? <laughs> how was that? Yeah, yeah. Eight, how was Tom Coverdale your dude every single day? <laughs> yeah. uh, TJ, can can we execute this? Is there a way? Yeah. Can, is there a way I can do this but not actually download TikTok or ever sign in? Uh, once we're in the office together, yeah, I'll just walk over to you and hand you a phone. Okay. Cause that's the other part is like, I don't, every time if someone sends me a TikTok link and I click on it, mm. I feel like I've been handed a bomb and mm. I'm just like, get me out of here <laughs> real quick. Um, you could take our guy Mook too. Okay. He's solid. Take Mook. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, this was fun guys. Thanks for, thanks for doing this. Uh, I'm excited yeah. to bowl with you guys. Uh, so w- what is the verdict on that? What is the approach? How are you guys handling it? Um, very cool. Oh, very bo- not, like, oh. I want one like, strike. What, 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 what do you? What, what is the perfect score for you guys bowling wise to show that you're good, but you're not trying too hard? One fifteen. One fifteen. Yeah, I think. But it went, as soon as you start, you're like, I I want to get a three hundred. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I want. Yeah, <laughs> it's like wanna, I think I, does I, a I'm part like, of you think you, a yeah. part of you <laughs> thinks like this. I could get a three hundred. Like every yeah. time I mini golf, I I could get all hole in ones. <laughs> and then you get obsessed. So I'm. It's like I. I'll say like bowling's stupid and you should only be average. Yeah. But you don't mean it. But then I'll go and I'll like, I want to win. I used to get, I used to be pretty good at bowl. I used to get into it because I, in college I would, that was like the one like uh, fun thing I would do. I never went to house parties. I never really, I, I would just go fucking bowl when I would have free time after practice. And uh, we would go to like the Tuesday night, like, you know, $1 beer, yeah. or whatever, to, you know, classic bowling promotion. And, uh, my high game all time was I think it was like two sixty. That's somewhere in really that's incredible. incredible. I, are you the but, favorite tomorrow? But that's the you thing. are you're you're that's, not even so, a dark horse. This is the thing is like I have not touched a bowling ball in like eight years maybe. I you're gonna forget what so to do like, with it. Yeah, like I don't know is it all gonna come back to me or is it not? I don't know. I had the spin down, you know, all that sort of thing. But also like 
I don't know. I, I'm very, very As soon as you see how delusionally confident and arrogant some of these employees get, you will want to win badly. <laughs> As soon as you see, but Che. but then you'll become as that. Soon as, as soon as you see Che, che says, like do like some dorky celebration, he's going to turn I'm around and do something choreographed. I'm the oh yeah, I'm the best athlete in the audience. Che goes, is just like I'm the best. Like, che was doing that on the Papa shot. Like he hit, he he made he, he missed like eleven in a row, and then makes one and turns to me and he's like, "You see that? You <laughs> yeah, see that form? See that. You see yeah. that jump shot?" And I was like, <laughs> yeah. "Yeah, he's yeah, the happiest out of all of us, though." So. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, all right, well. KB and Nick. Yeah, thank you for uh, having my, us, man. My two yeah. favorite guys at uh at Barstool. These by guys a long are shot. so fucking by funny. By far, you, yeah. Before you guys go, can you like just do like a just like say yeah, something? Say positive? a joke, man. Yeah. Just do the funny thing you guys do. <laughs> yeah, man. Thank you. Just I was hoping you'd for, ask. Just do it. That should have uh, been like your first show. question. <laughs> can you guys just like be funny? Yeah, you say a joke. Um, appreciate you guys doing this. This yeah, was man. fun. No, thank uh, you. Thank we'll you. have to do it again when please. You owe us one now. You got to hop on ours. I would love to do that. Cool. I would. We'll just put this out on both channels. Yeah, just do that. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you to uh, Nick and KB. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I, I feel like we, we all have the same. They, they were interviewing me there for a second, TJ. That was, that was interesting how they do that. They're, uh, the way they navigate conversation, it always fascinates. You said it in the intro. Getting a laugh out of them feels like getting like approval from like your dad for the yeah. first time as a kid for some reason. Well, I mean, Kyle kind of talked about it that like you got you got to learn to live with the with being uncomfortable or whatever. He is a they're they're both really good at this, but especially him. Um, he can just stare at you and just like <laughs> stare, and he's fine with it. And he's not trying to like he's it's not like a power move, and it's not like you know he's just kind of like yeah I'll just sit here and stare at you and I, I'm fine I'm not uncomfortable are you uncomfortable and I'm like yeah I kind of I kind of am but I I want to I want to get you to smile and laugh and um yeah there's something about the dynamic that you that, that you want to win them over but yeah those do if, if you're not aware uh I I, I don't th this is the weird thing about me uh stepping into the barstool world is that I I genuinely have no idea what my audience is TJ I don't know if like everybody listening to this is a stoolie and they're all just like the only reason I'm here is because of Nick and KB or if like uh, a lot of people like followed me from other stops in my career and they're like, who the hell are these guys? Which I, at this point, I'm sure everyone kind of knows Nick and KB, but if you don't, um, yeah, go watch, go watch them on the yak, go watch uh, anus as they call it. Uh, their, their, their podcast. Um, they're just, they're, they're creative dudes. They're very funny. And uh, yeah, I, I would be very uncomfortable if I was them having guys like me uh, gas them up all the time because that that's kind of how it works. Is like they're the they're the guys who everybody at Barstool is like kind of funny, but they're the geniuses of the you know <laughs> like they're the guys that are like operating on another level. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it was fun having them on the show and talking to them. Uh, but we are doing I, I said it kind of at the top. We're doing the bowling thing, um, so we're actually recording this on Tuesday, which is not how we, we typically operate, uh, for a Thursday release. We usually do it on Wednesday. So, uh, I, I, I want to say that just because shit happens in the world. And if Stanford and Cal join the ACC or the big 10, or God knows what the hell is going on in the world of sports. Uh, and I did not talk about it in a way that you may have expected me to, I apologize. It's because, uh, one, I, I, I committed to this bowling deal that's going to take up every second of my day tomorrow on Wednesday. <laughs> and two, uh, it was a chaotic day around here uh, in the world of Barstool because uh, Dave owns the company again, TJ. Is that, is, that, is that what we learned from this meeting? I will, so, so those of you watching this on YouTube, I want to, my, my, my first statement is this. I swear to God, I had no idea that this was happening. I had no idea that... Uh, uh, that this was going to be, we, we had an all hands on deck meeting at, at Barstool that was called, uh, Erica puts out the email. I ignore it. Like I do all emails. I don't ignore Erica. I just like, you know, I, I read the emails, like all hands on deck. I'm sure TJ will fill me in on the details after the meeting. I don't need to go to that. Um, but then you guys started doing the yak today. It was a total clusterfuck. I'm sitting at my house two miles away trying to watch the yak as I'm having my lunch. Nothing is working. I'm losing my mind. So, Literally, the only reason I came to the office today was because I wanted to get to the bottom of what was going on with the yak. So I drove in. Then you were like, yeah, we're having the all hands on deck meeting. I was like, oh, that, oh that's right. That is. To, yeah, that is right. I guess I'll stick around for that. Anyway, when I got ready to come into the office, I saw my wake up Mincy shirt uh, just staring at me in the closet. 
And there was something about it. I have not worn this shirt since May 1st. I believe that was the date, if memory serves, uh, that it was no longer in vogue to wear the Wake Up Mincy shirt. I've had it. I've kept it. Uh, it is. It has been in my closet, but I, I have not worn it uh, because I just wasn't sure if, if the vibes were right, whatever. I'm getting ready to come in today. I see the Wake Up Mincy shirt. I'm like, I think enough time has passed. I think at this point it's like a vintage thing. I think like... You know, I think people will respect it. I think people will like it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to step outside the comfort zone. I'm going to wear the wake up minty shirt to the office. We'll see how people react. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go over, but we'll see. I walk in. The very first comment I get from anybody is uh, Fazoli uh, says to me, you're going to have to blur that shirt out, by the way. Like you can't, you can't. Titus, nice shirt, but you can't wear that on on camera. We're gonna have to blur it out because you know because Mincy's the devil, I guess. I don't know what his point of view was. I was like, <laughs> I was like, don't talk about my king that way. First of all, um, but yeah, I so I wear the shirt. Uh, I wait for the meeting. The meeting happens. Dave says that he's bought Barstool back, um, and and uh, inevitably the first question everybody had, which I you know I I had it. Everybody else had it. Is like, what does this mean for Mincy? And I don't know. I don't have the answer yet. I, I'm hoping Mincy gets back in the fold. But uh, I got to say, TJ, what a what an incredible coincidence. Just an incredible, like, d- d- did I know? Like, deep down, did I know? Did I know that this yeah. was happening? Is that why I wore the shirt today? In the Viva, the v- sometimes the Viva stars align in a spectacular <laughs> <laughs> constellation. I do believe Mincy's been contacted and that there is something in the works. So. <laughs> per, per Dave's tweet. So... Mitzi's what, the number three trend on Twitter in the world right now. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I wore the. Sh- I swear to God, I wore this shirt before I knew the news. I'm a, I'm a Mincy hipster. I was one of the 18 people who bought this shirt. Now they're gonna blow up. Now they're just gonna be flying off the. I should have sold it when I had the chance. Maybe I should have cashed in on my. Uh, you know when there was only 18 shirts out there in circulation. But uh, yeah, Dave bought the company back. Um, my thoughts as a guy who has been here. Uh, you know, a very long time, brick by brick, and and part of the pirate ship and. Uh, I'm very excited for the 20 year anniversary just to kind of reminisce on on all the twists and turns that Barstool has had in the 20 years that I've been here. Uh, it's 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 been a roller coaster. TJ really has. Uh, <laughs> it really has. In a, it really, it really, short yeah, amount no, of time. No, the time I've been here, it has legitimately been it kind of fucking insane. <laughs> But uh, I don't. I'm not privy to the business part of all this. I, but I'm trying to just connect the dots here. My understanding of how this all went down for Dave is that he sold the company to Penn. They hired me, and then Dave bought it back at a discount. So like my understanding, <laughs> my understanding is like Dave sold the company. He's still involved in the company, so he's like, we need to drive down the value of the company so I can then buy it back. How can uh, anybody have any ideas on how we can drive the value down? And then he's like, I got it. Let's hire Titus. Let's get, <laughs> let's get him in the mix. Um, that happened. The value gets driven down immensely. And then he steps back in and he's like, give me that company back. And now he's got, you know, he's now we're, we're back on the pirate ship. And I guess that's how it works. I don't know. What, what are your, what are your thoughts, TJ? As someone who, first of all, are, are the, the, the BS pin hat, is that like, you know? Yeah, I think we're still chilling for now. Like, okay. obviously they provided a, a huge amount of opportunity for Barstool to grow to somewhere where we'd never thought they could. Yeah. But Dave being back in control, I think is good for, you know, our creative atmosphere. Yeah. It does feel like there's going to be more of the, the pirate, which is why I, I came here. This was the, this was the point of, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I I, I, I enjoyed Penn. I enjoyed uh, the private jet experience that we got to the uh, the casino. That was that was a ton of fun. But uh, yeah, the, the the idea of working at a, a place where just chaos abounds is very enticing to me. And and I'm excited about the future of of where all of this is going um, with Dave taking over. So yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, anything else? Do we any other shout outs? I want to shout out, I guess, uh, uh, the the U.S. team beating Puerto Rico. Um, you can be completely honest with me, TJ. How much of the so right now they're doing the tune-ups? It's just like USA. They, they play Slovenia, uh, Luka Doncic team uh, coming up here this weekend. I think is the next game. Um, how much of the World Cup itself, when when the 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 FIBA World Cup happens and the United States men's basketball team is going to, I believe it's in Japan and the Philippines, uh, is going to try to win the World Cup. How many seconds of that will you watch? Um, Depends if, if it's on. 
if there's like a highlight yeah. that goes viral or something, maybe <laughs> I might stick around to watch it, depending on what player is yeah. tagged in the the caption. Yeah, but that's just being like I don't. It's not on my. It's radar. not something that's on the radar. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a bummer. Because I I this is this is something that is very much on my radar. Is that we're the United? I think the United States is in trouble as a basketball country, and. uh I'm worried, but then we always have the fallback of like we're not sending our best players, so who cares if we lose? Um, I don't know. I, I want us to win. That's a controversial. That's a controversial opinion, uh, especially in these days of uh, our women's soccer team flaming out in the round of 16. But uh, I would love to see the United States crush everybody at every sport. I still am that way, um, and I will continue to be that way. So like, I don't. I, I'm a little worried though. They didn't look awesome against Puerto Rico, but. We should still win this thing. We I don't care I don't care who we're sending. We're sending a, a team full of NBA players. A lot of them are are very very good players. <laughs> you know, like Jalen Brunson is it, it, he's awesome. Paolo Bancaro's rookie of the year. On down the line, the rest of the crew like Anthony Edwards is is he, he's he might be the dude on this team that I'm most excited about. Uh, he I think they got to just hand the keys to him and let him cook, but. Um, we got to win this thing. We have to win this thing. So I'm going to be glued in on it watching. And uh, I just don't know how much I believe that we are going to win the thing. Um, international basketball. It's, it's just crazy. It's, it's so insane. Like if anybody, if anybody wonders why sometimes on this show and other shows and, and just in life in general, I go crazy about the NBA and I get like this reputation as being an NBA hater. Um, just watch, just watch the FIBA World Cup, and you'll understand. Because like the guys who are dominant in the NBA, just that—that that, that was the frustration watching them, them against Puerto Rico. Is like dudes who you expect to be dominant, and you've seen like dominate in certain ways at the NBA level. Suddenly, you're like trying to figure out the international. It's a completely different sport, and I guess that's the frustration. Is like uh, a guy like Ricky Rubio is so freaking good, and like like Spain has the number one team in the world. We're actually number two. And Rubio's not playing apparently because he's taking mental health break or whatever. But like, they have all these dudes on Spain that are like incredible international players that aren't necessarily awesome NBA players. And how can that be? Well, the how how that can be is that they're two different sports. And I guess like you could point the finger at the NBA or you could point the finger at the rest of the world and say who got it wrong when it comes to like deciding what is the real basketball, you know? And I guess I'm someone who's just not an arrogant American about it. And I say. I think maybe we should play more like the rest of the world. That seems like what we should do. Is like we should. I've been on this for a while, though. I think the United States should hire a coach. That is, this is what I want Brad Stevens to do with his life. I want him to be the permanent United States uh, men's basketball team coach. That's his full time job. I want the United States to get very serious about dominating international basketball events again. But unfortunately, the only way that we ever take it very, very seriously like that is if we lose everything. So, you know, I get put in an uncomfortable position where it's like, do, am I cheering for the U.S. to lose in the World Cup? So that way, um, maybe we take it more seriously moving forward. And the answer is no. I, I'm still cheering for us to win. I just wish – I wish there's a way we could do both. I wish there's a way we could dominate everything but then also treat this like it's the, you know, FIFA World Cup. And it's like we have to – we have to be very, very serious about the uh, roster construction and the coaching philosophies and all that sort of thing. When the reality is the United States basically just sends out like a mass email to the top like 100 American players. And they're just like, anybody want to play in this? Anybody opting in? And then that's kind of how they put the roster together and we go from there. Um, but no, I, I, I trust our boys. I think we're still going to win it. Uh, I just, uh, in a weird way, it's going to be more compelling maybe because the, the, the talent isn't as explosive as it could be for us uh but um yeah i i i'm slightly worried but i think uh i think we're still gonna get the job done so there you go um i'm more focused on the next global jam championship the global jam yeah why don't we just sing kentucky why don't we right. just sing the the kentucky team instead of uh, this team full of nba player do you think in a seven game series kentucky could beat this united states team there's a hypothetical for you throw that out there sound off in the comments as they say <laughs> as the big cat said <laughs> Who do you think wins? Uh, the dream team? People forget, TJ. Spe I mean, I, I, I said the Kentucky part uh, in jest, but people do forget that the only game, the dream team, the original dream team I'm talking about, 1992, the only game that they lost was against a, a team full of college all-stars. People forget that. Mm -hmm. That's a, That is a true fact. They scrimmaged the college all-stars. The college all-stars beat them, uh, and then they went on to dominate every other team they played. So that makes you think. 
Yeah. Should are pro we, players even good? Are pro players even good? Or are college players better? That that's that's something you have to consider. Um let me know in the comments. <laughs> uh any any other shout outs? Anything I was just else? gonna shout out the uh efficiency of the American transportation system. The my journey to Chicago. Yeah, what was your was... journey to Chicago? What was the uh I didn't hear the oh. story. I didn't hear the full story. I don't know what's going on, but it like millions of or thousands of flights around the country have gotten canceled in the last like three days. And mo a lot of those were between New York and Chicago, as it seemed. Oh, really? So I was supposed to fly yeah. to Chicago today from Newark, which is near where I live in New Jersey. And that flight got canceled last night. So, And there were zero other seats on any flights out of New York, LaGuardia, or Newark before like 1 p.m. today. So I would have missed the yak. So we were like, all right, let's do like the – the bold thing and take a train to Philadelphia and fly out at like 9 a.m. No, that's what you did? Book that flight. It immediately got canceled. What? And there was no other flights except for a 6 a.m. out of Philadelphia. So I took a 3 a.m. train out of New York to get to Philly by 5.30 to get on a plane at 6. Are you serious? To get to Chicago by breakfast. Dude, that is... That's for the, the act to get delayed that's an hour. Just for the act to get... That is the most Viva shit I've ever heard, dude. Yeah. That's incredible. Big Cat said if the first flight got canceled, he would have been like, all right, I guess I'm not coming. <laughs> I guess I'll see you guys another day. But somebody's got to keep the lights on around here. Oh, my God. Now that we're back on the pirate ship. And you did all that just for me, just to be here yep. to do this show? Well, I heard Nick and KB were going to come <laughs> on. So. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, that, uh, all, all the flight cancellations and, and it, it's weird how, like, <sighs> So it's weird that we that we as a as a society have gotten to a point where like we all agree that that the airlines stink, but then also like complaining about it, like every, it, it's just like a weird crabs in a bucket mentality, you know? Like if, if everyone knows how bad it is, but then if you if you voice your opinion, you're like, dude, this fucking airline canceling my flight, everyone's like, shut up, nobody cares, dude. You think like I have to deal? You think that's bad, dude? I had to fly from San Jose to Tallahassee the other day. You know how many connections that was, and um, and instead, I feel like we should all be banding together to enact change. You know, like I feel like all of us, <laughs> but that's like a one. That's like an issue that I feel like every American's like in alignment with is that we need some reform with these airlines, right? But then anytime like someone tries to rally the troops and they're like, enough is enough. I had the worst experience. Here's the experience. I'm ready to uh, sign my petition, everybody. Everyone's like, fuck your petition, dude. You think you had it bad? Here's what. And I just find that fascinating, TJ. It's yeah. like something we all agree on, but then no one wants to hear it as well. Like no one wants to hear your, your sob story. Shut up with your sob story, dude. And it's like, why? But if we all share our sob stories, then we all might compare notes here and realize that this is the worst and we should do something about this. Yeah, we should fight the airlines. We should fight the airlines. Yeah. I don't know how we do that. But right. Like, but I'm in. I'll, I'll do that. All right. Yeah. I don't know. But, uh, that sucks. I've actually had good luck with airlines. Believe it or not. <laughs> I haven't had, yeah. had a flight canceled in a long time. So I'm, uh, I'm worried that the karma is coming for me or the, the law of averages, I guess I should say is coming right. for me. Uh, all right, that's the show. Thank you to Nick and KB. Uh, thank you to everybody watching and 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 listening. Um, we are going to be well, watch. I'll play one more time. Watch the Bolero. We're doing. Are we doing it live on Wednesday? It'll have already happened by the time this comes out. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Go watch the replay. Go yeah. watch the replay. Watch me. I'm gonna call my shot. I am going to bowl. Uh, I'm setting my over under at. 150 how many games are we doing like what's the format because here's what i'm worried 16 about 16 person tournament okay it's a one-on-one -on -one. Do, do i get a warm-up at all because i'm worried about my first mm. few balls going in the gutter because i'm trying to put spin on them and I, I i gotta feel out the lane first yeah you gotta research the oil patterns yeah and i'm worried i'm worried like the first five balls i throw are gonna be gutter but then i'm gonna find yeah. my groove that's what happened to back. when when part of my take did their bowling challenge where max billy and jake tried to bowl like a certain score. Yeah. Max literally threw like the first 20 balls into the gutter because he was trying to figure it out. And then he did. And then he was like throwing. And then really it was well. awesome. Yeah. But it's too late. Was it too late or no? It just, it, it killed. It was it just like, a, his, there was no yeah. time cap on it. So it just like dragged him out for a really long time. Shit. I'm worried about that. Um, I think my high game, I'm, I, I, I expect to break uh, over 155. I expect Dude. to have a game over 155. 
for sure. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. I, I, when, when I, when I was bowling a lot and I was doing well, I was, I had my own ball, which I don't have anymore. I got rid of, um, I had my own shoes. That's how serious I was wow. about this TJ. Uh, so, you know, you start to throw in some of these variables. I don't know the oil pattern of this thing. I don't know the density of the pens, how old the pens are, right. you know, like, uh, I don't know. It also, I, I need to know what the animation will be if mm. you get a strike and you get a turkey and all that sort of thing. Like, I I, I need to see that ahead of time because yeah. I need to, because some, some of those animations will give you a little more juice and get you more excited about the. Some of them, you're just like, what the hell are we doing here? And then now you're like, you're not thinking about your next throw. You're thinking about what a weird fucking animation that was for the, you know, the double strike animation. So. Yeah. I don't know. There's there's a lot of variables that go into it. That's why I'm I'm setting the over under at 155. I expect the bowl at least a 155 in one of these games. Um, we will see though. We will we will see how it all it all shakes out. Um, that's it. Goodbye everybody. Uh, I will see you next week on Tuesday. Enjoy the weekend. See ya. <laughs>